Julia, hey. Julia, take it away. Okay. Are we, I, are I we ready? So welcome to Fight Nomad podcast, episode number six, I believe. Now it is currently 10, 11 p.m. Oh, I am joined by my lovely friends, Taka and Keith. We are in their professional podcast studio. I'm so excited to be here. We are currently in Bangkok. Um, yeah, we were not planning to film this late. We are also a little bit inebriated. <laughs> we, were, we were just at one of um, uh, Taka and Ki's clients. Um, it was a Japanese restaurant called right. Yankee. The right way. Hold on. <laughs> is that there it is? I loved it. Okay. I had never been to a restaurant like that before, and so like I had just been come from Muay Thai training, and then and then I called Keith. I was just like, it's probably too late now for us to finish the podcast episode, but <laughs> but Keith was like, no, uh, come join us. Like then we'll just shoot it afterwards. So the funny thing is, I was just in Sri Lanka, and guess what? You were the one who introduced me to this to the, the opportunity. Yeah. You introduced me to that opportunity to go to Sri Lanka to help host the retreat. And then that's where I was the past week when I filmed the previous episode. So Sri Lanka was the first time I taught Muay Thai. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this whole time that I've been living in Thailand, I've just been documenting, learning from like other coaches, but sure. I've never really, I always felt an imposter syndrome and I never taught. So I'm quite spontaneous. So it was just like, Sri Lanka, sure. Oh, seminar, sure. Let's do it. Let's try yeah. it. Like always trying new things. And then after that, flew back to Bangkok and then from Bangkok took like, I think I arrived 4 a.m. in Bangkok and then took okay. like a two hour taxi down to Patea um, to one of my clients to it's called rage fight academy yeah, and so i actually like, saw i saw what you're doing with them yeah they're super super cool jim like it's um really serious about fighting i think it, um right now the the majority of the community there is french like they have a really cool uh, head coach your fighters gym foreign fighters gym but like the 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 foreign fighters are all fighting in bangkok like you know they're they're winning a ton of their fights do and they have do they have thai fighters there or is it is actually it truly... it's mainly foreign fighters mm -hmm. oftentimes when you have a foreign coach the foreign coach they will focus more on explanation they're obligated to kind of explain it Whereas, like, Thai fighters, like you said, they just grew up, they kind of grew up. It's with... kind of muscle memory. Circling back, starting to get to a point, you know, like, I own a social media management company, and yeah. I also own a coaching uh, business. And so now with a social media management agency, I'm starting to try to, like, empower the businesses to, like, learn how to film their own content. I will go there, and I'll be like, hey, like, always remember to have light facing, you know, like, the natural light facing your back yeah. so that they're not silhouettes try not to move the camera like really fast. Yeah. And so then I show generally like the receptionist, someone who's there, how to shoot the content. And yeah. then they, I have them send it to my team. Mm -hmm. And that way we always have someone on site who can like shoot content all the time yeah. and then send it to the team. And then our team processes it and turns it into content. So far it's working pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, good, and good. I think it's good because then it's like you're you're teaching them how to fish, essentially. Yeah. You're just like, let me teach you how to film content. But because like the editing process is quite labor intensive too. Sure. Just just film it, but our team will handle like the editing and the posting, but we'll kind of like help dictate yeah. what it is. <laughs> you look so funny with your headband. <laughs> Did you see his look? Yeah. So moving on, so, so there I was yeah. working with Rage. Charlton. Charlton. Yeah, you know him? No, I've been watching watching you guys. You're like he's like you're like practicing clinch with him. He knows his shit. Been in Pattaya, we've been in doing the social media management, nice. and at the same time, check out what I'm hey. wearing. Awesome. It's finally available for sale. The one thing is like it's available for pre order, but yeah. um, the factories they still have to make the the bra pads. In order for a girl to have a sports bra, they you need to have padding. Bra pads. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like extra padding that like hides the nipples. Uh, yeah. The people at YouTube, which is like who I collaborate, they're all male. It's like if you're not a woman, you don't get it. You need bra pads. Yeah, totally bra pads. Let's do that. <laughs> if we just make the fabric thicker, doesn't that like work? And I'm that like, makes sense. I know for a man, <laughs> for a man it makes sense, but I'm like, it's not no, for me sense. personally. It's no, not a sports it, bra. Make it if thicker. It, 
No, I understand. In the industry, oftentimes this is the issue that I see is that women like fall in love with Muay Thai, but oftentimes all the apparel is like makes you feel ultra masculine. It's like blood, skulls, like dark colors. I'm training Muay Thai, but we're just like, oh my God, I feel like a bro. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. feel like- Where are the flowers, waterfalls? No. Uh... <laughs> How I see fighting is I see it as self-expression. You're just kind of embodying what your personality is like. Mm. And so like why I wanted to like come out with feminine outfits is I was just like, it is possible to fight in a feminine way. M Muay Thai doesn't have to be masculine or feminine. It's mm -hmm. just like, it has no gender associated with it. It's just an expression of yourself. But sometimes we just need like an outfit that helps us like feel like we haven't gone to the other gender in a yeah. way. And that's why I just felt like, I just really wanted to, to get these outfits out there. Even though I'm not making like a ton of money with with this, like there, yeah. I have other projects that are way more financially beneficial. But yeah. I just now I'm so happy that I get to like wear my own outfit, exactly. and I yeah. love working with people, like good yeah. people. Just like like with you guys to create this podcast, yeah. I You're would never be do. able to do this by myself. Like to have a studio like this, like the lighting, it's incredible. And so that's part of the enjoyment of entrepreneurship exactly. in a way, collaborating with people, like combining your skill sets, and that's the same thing with you as well i would have never been able to do it on my own so anyways yes. it's been so much fun my timer just went off is there anything else you wanted to talk about i will talk about uh like the upcoming week so the upcoming week i tomorrow man it's already like 10. no it's fine the, the flight is at 150 but tomorrow i'm gonna be <laughs> flying to bali and hopping straight into a two-week fight camp with soma fight club i feel very excited mm. there's always like this life is always so filled with with adventure and so next week is going to be an interesting update on that and how that is going and we are going to wrap up this podcast episode here thank you oh by the way how much is it to rent the studio if you want to dip your toes it is five thousand baht for 60 minutes amazing all right well that wraps up this podcast episode so proud of us i'm, I'm so proud no seriously yeah the fact we're still <laughs> the fact that we're it's, still back here wait, we're back in this 10 30 p.m we're back in the studio but hey thank you so much for being like okay fuck it let's do it let's get it done <laughs>